Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I'm back to finish off our series on Gumby. And remember your promise to show everybody what Gumby looks like on the inside. <laughs> That's true, Jess, and I intend to dissect the Gumby figure, well, to find out what he looks like on the inside, for scientific purposes, of course. Of course. But before we can do anything, let's start the show. Raz, Raz Holly, Holly, hit, hit the, the music! music! From 1965 to roughly 1999, we've covered a good amount of Gumby figures and merchandise. Certainly not everything, as there is almost a Rule 34 when it comes to Gumby. If it exists and it's being sold, there's probably one with Gumby's face on it. But I like to focus more on the figures, and today, Gumby is still being sold at retail and online. In his latest form, N.J. Croce is still using that mold from the mid to late 80s. He's a light green color now. Well, at least he's green. Pokey has gone from being almost brick red to his current bright orange. The original Lakeside and Jesco Pokies had his main stop just at the years, and nowadays it comes all the way over. Pokey also now sports big blue eyes. All in all, I like how these modern figures look. Around the early 2000s, Bendy Juggernaut and Jay Croce started producing the Gumby figures. Let's take a look at what Gumby looks like today. Okay, so let's start from the beginning here. The Gumby and Friends boxed bendable set. Now these Gumby and Pokey are going to come individually. Uh, you can buy those individually, but this is really the only way that you're gonna get Prickle, Goo, and Minga who, if you're wondering, is Gumby's sister. Uh, Minga is, uh, has the green afro, the pink body that's flared out like a dress here, and, and a little red bow on the top. And we're gonna take a look at all these guys here in a second, but first let's take a look at the back of the box. Gumby is loved near and far for his good heart and kind nature. He's an everyman hero who always leaves a place better than how he found it. You see, that's why I am like Gumby, and we're all a little bit like Gumby. Gumby has a magical ability to shape shift and travel to any place, any time, past, present, or future. He's like a god. He moves through any portal of imagination. If you can imagine it, Gumby can do it. He was once a little green slab of clay, but now, he is a posable figure for ages three and up, and we're gonna take a look at it right now. Okay, so now that we've got him out of the box, we can see what everybody looks like out of the box. This goo seems really, really bright compared to uh, the counterparts that I've seen in the past. Older uh, figures that, that I've seen from the 80s and 90s. Not super poseable, the arms are gonna move, but I'm not gonna look at Goo first. Let's take a look at Gumby. He's like the, the star of the show. It doesn't say Goo on the box. It says Gumby and friends. And so here he is. It's Gumby, it's a standard Gumby. We've looked at so many of these. Uh, modern Gumby, um, you can tell by the bright green color, the um, smaller head bump, the square feet um, that helps him stand up so well. 
He's super poseable. He's super awesome. Um, Gumby, to me, is really the perfect figure, and I really don't have a lot of shit to talk when it comes to Gumby, so, you know, you gotta forgive me there. I really like Gumby, and, and that's about it. However, let's take a look at the rest of them. We haven't really got to see a modern Pokey uh, so far past the Trend Masters, and this is what he looks like. Um, he is orange. He has the big blue eyes. Um, his mohawk goes all the way up over the top. Um, he's Pokey and he's dope. I love Pokey. Pokey's great. Pokey was voiced by Art Clokey. Um, he's generally the more level-headed, pragmatic of the two, if you're familiar with the series. Um, there's 200 and something episodes of Gumby out there. Um, yeah, and Pokey's always super cool. Uh, I like Pokey and I like this, this figure a lot. It's great to have a modern uh, Pokey figure for the collection. Next up, who will we, let's look at Minga. Minga is an expression used in the UK um, for a not so good looking girl. <laughs> She's a bit of a Minga. <laughs> And, uh, but Minga's okay. Um, she's flexible. Um, she's more flexible than the other uh, remaining two figures in this group. Um, arms and legs, um, pretty good. Uh, they kind of come up here to where it looks like a dress. She's kind of, you can flex her over like that. It's pretty cool. Um, she's got the little bow on the top of the head, the green um, afro puff sort of hairstyle. Uh, she is Gumby's little sister. I am not super familiar with this character, to tell you the truth. But, um, there she is. Minga. Prickle and Goo. Um, you really can't have one without the other. Art Clokey attended a lecture back in the day um, by a psychologist. He was freaking bored to tears through the whole thing, but he did have one takeaway. The psychologist said that there were two types of people in the world, prickly people and gooey people, and these two characters were born. Um, Prickle and Goo. Prickle is a dragon. Uh, Prickle can breathe breathe fire, um, and he, he's got a voice kind of like this, um, <laughs> he's kind of a cool character, and he has more of a prickly personality. Um, the, the figure itself, uh, you can move his arms, um, the tail isn't necessarily posable, the body itself, he doesn't be on the neck, can't really do much with him. Um, he's good on a shelf or whatever. If you like Prickle, if you gotta have them all, you gotta have Prickle. Now, finally, Goo, back to where we started. Here she is. She is a little bit brighter color than the ones that they've made in the past. Uh, the paint job on this one um, looks a little uneven. I don't know if that's on purpose. Um, it seems like everybody in this box came out a little dirty. I don't know what that's about, um, but maybe they've been in there for a while. I think these are mid 2000s. Um, these might be 15 years old. I've opened up so much old stuff recently that something that's like 15 years old, it's it, it might as well have been made yesterday. So here she is, um, the, the arms, I guess those are arms move. She's like a, a fish or something. She's like a blob with, a, with a, you know, Goldilocks. And uh, she has the gooey personality. She's nice and sweet. And she talks like this. Oh, Gumby, you're so gallant. That's what she talks like. And that's goo. And that's the set. And what would a hero be without his villains, the Blockheads? Uh, here they are in all their red blockheaded glory. One's got a frown and one's got a smile. Uh, the frowny one looks to be touching the smiling one's genitals. Um, and the smiling one looks to be touching the frowning one's ass. That's pretty much what it looks like from the box, but enough uh, fucking around here. Uh, people often theorize on why one's got a J and one's got a G. You can come up with your own sort of theories. There really is no reasoning behind it, not that I know of, or there's never really been any hard evidence to prove that these were named after anything other than whatever the fuck. And uh, here on the back of the package, you've got the collect them all. You've got the blockheads, the mini Gumbies, the Gumbities, if you will, um, which we might be taking a look at here in a bit. And uh, the Gumby and Pals box set. Uh, also keychains and the other, you know, we have the lyrics of the Gumby theme song. And uh, also available 
at Gumby.com. Um, if you do go to Gumby.com, you're gonna pay out the nose in shipping. Like, I don't, I mean, it's really not their fault, but that's just what you gotta do. Um, you can find pretty much all this stuff on Amazon. If you've got Prime or whatever, you, you know, you don't have to pay for the shipping. Um, and that's pretty much how I got a lot of the new stuff uh, was via, via either eBay or Amazon. Sometimes these eBay guys will fucking just rake you over the coals. Um, but anyway, I digress. Let's take a look at the blockheads. And here we have the blockheads, blockhead J and blockhead G. Um, they are just as flexible as Gumby. Uh, you can move the legs and arms. It's almost to the point. They're a little shorter than Gumby, so they don't necessarily have the torso flex that Gumby does. Um, but you can get some cool poses out of them. Um, it's kind of neat to have them as the little team. Um, they're they're going to look neat on a desk just to have this, these two, especially if your initials might be GJ or JG. Imagine having these on your desk. How cool would that be? But anyway, um, these are the blockheads. These are the villains of the Gumby universe. Um, they don't speak to each other. They don't have voices, so I don't know how they communicate with each other. Um, but look at these guys. They're, they're good pals, buddies to the end. Uh, the blockheads, I uh, gotta love them. When, Lord, when are we gonna get to the slice and dice? For scientific reasons, of course. If you just keep your pants on, Chess, I'm trying to build to it! Anyway, the modern line may not have accessories or vehicles, but that doesn't mean NJ Croce and other licensees haven't choked the shelves with lots of Gumby Garby. So let's take a look at some of the rest of this stuff. Okay, and let's take a look at the Gumby 50th Anniversary Edition um, figure. Um, he actually doesn't look like any Gumby I've ever seen. The box is somewhat based on the Lakeside box. Um, behind Gumby it says the Lakeside reissues. Whereas this doesn't look like any Lakeside Gumby, at least that we've seen so far. Um, he does have more of a sweeping out uh, uh, bump, but he does look different. He is different looking, and I'm interested to see what he looks like out of the box. But before we do that, on the back, you've kind of got a little bit of a uh, description of what Gumby is and a little history. So, like, cool facts on the back here. I actually learned a couple things taking a look just on the back of this box back when I got it. Carry Gumby in your pocket. Put them on your desk. I didn't know you could do that. Stand them up. Sit them down. He can hang from anywhere. Gumby can do most anything. Uh, Gumby's TV debut was on the Howdy Doody show in 1956. In that same year, Gumby then stars in his own NBC Saturday morning TV series, The Gumby Show. I think we discussed that earlier. The first bendable Gumby sweeps the country in 1964. By 1966, Gumby sales break all records. And that's a little vague, but I, I do know he sold very well. It takes 1,440 still frame pictures to make one minute of clay animation. 100 new Gumby episodes were produced in 1988. There are now a total of 214 episodes in existence. I do believe I said it was 200 and something. I was right. In 1995, Gumby's first feature film is released. That was also his last feature film. There has not been one since. What are some of Gumby's qualities? These are the real important questions we're asking on the back of this package. He is flexible, helpful, optimistic. All is possible, honest, and pure, adventurous, fearless, loving, and everybody's friend. Gumby represents the God in all of us. Namaste. Um, it actually says good, but it, really how he's described is almost like a deity. <laughs> we, need to, we, we may need to fear um, as well as respect. But let's see what Gumby looks like out of the box the 50th anniversary. So here he is, the uh, 50th anniversary edition Gumby. Um, he, again, he doesn't look a lot like a lakeside figure. He does have a little bit of a similar head style 
to a lakeside or Jesco figure. He does have the square feet, the modern square feet, which makes him a lot easier to stand up. Um, but let's see what he looks like in comparison to today's Gumby. Um, so he's a little more dull in color, um, whereas the modern Gumby is very bright green. And got to still have the eyes looking off to the uh, to the left here or to Gumby's right. Um, the face is very similar here. They still have the eyebrows and the nose painted. Um, he's just as flexible. He's made out of the same material as modern Gumby. Um, they do make his arms and uh, and legs just a little bit closer to the shape of the old ones. Let's take a look at a Jesco and a Lakeside and and compare them. Okay, so let's take a look at Jesco Gumby. Um, the head bump. Um, lines up fairly similar. The the uh, the Jesco Gumby does have some sharper edges, and uh, we know that the Jesco Gumbies, these uh, earlier ones, were based on the same mold um, that made the the original ones. He's got his little um, square feet. Um, takes it's not as it's not as long as the uh, the modern ones, so he's really hard to stand up. You really have to have to work to get him to to stand up, um, but. Still f plausible, flexible, all that good stuff. And uh, this one, I don't know what this is supposed to look like. I mean, he kind of looks like an old Gumby. Let's take a look at the Lakeside Gumby. This is the late Lakeside Gumby, but he's still a Lakeside Gumby to be sure. And um, yeah, that, that sharp edge, that, that same mold from the, from the Lakeside era, this is what they look like. This looks a little bit more like the original ones. They had more of a rounder edge. Um, those are really hard to find, but they weren't lakesides. <laughs> um, maybe the lakeside, like that old, old beat up one. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so this one is my oldest one, I'm assuming because of the condition that it's in. And even that, even that um, has a little bit sharper lines than this Gumby here. Um, you know, and it's made out of that flexible, twistable, squeezable rubber. Um, whereas this new one, he is made out of the same thing that he is made out of today, that he was made out of 30 years ago. Um, these guys are all peas in a pod. They might have came, they feel like they all came from the same press, all the same, the same factory. Uh, they seem to be all made out of the same material. They're all slightly different in color, but that's the 50th anniversary Gumby. Okay, so here's something I'm really excited to open up. This is the Gumby first ever 1950s collector edition. This is a based on the uh, the puppet from the TV show. I'm gonna go ahead and just read the description here. Modeled after the clay puppets used to animate the Gumby show in the 1950s, this Gumby toy is the first of its kind. See how surprised they are? Gumby's Pony Pal Pokey has also been recolored to match his appearance in the original series. Well, thanks for recoloring Pokey. Jesus, we did all this stuff to make sure that we're basing the Gumby, the Gumby, off the Gumby puppet. But uh, Pokey, uh, yeah, we recolored him to kind of match stuff. So enjoy, motherfuckers. Let's get this thing open and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so here's what they look like out of the box. Um, Gumby appears to me to be a lot bigger um, than his modern counterpart, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's just take a look at what they look like. They do look like the puppets from the TV show. Um, they're made out of the same materials that your modern Gumbies are made out of. He's just, seems to me, to be just as poseable as, uh, as our, our modern Gumbies. Um, he can kind of do whatever you need him to do. It uh, seems like spending four or five years in that box hasn't been the best thing for him. He's got like pieces of fucking box all over him. Uh, maybe tearing into that box the way I did wasn't the smartest thing to do, but fuck it, I don't care. Um, so here is uh, Pokey. Um, Pokey does look like he's been recolored to match the television show. Also, you can tell that his, uh, his mane stops right at the top of his head. Um, he doesn't have the little dimples that the old figure did, but maybe this is what the figure looked like um, 
on the show, but they didn't say that. They didn't say they based this off the off the Pokey Puppet. They're like, and we gave you a Pokey too that kind of looks like it. Um, the Gumby though, he has the little red dot eyes that are like little, always look like little red pieces of candy or something on the show. And uh, he has his mouth all I'm Gumby. Um, so let's take a look at how he compares to his modern day counterpart. Here is modern day Gumby, and yeah, this one is a lot larger um, than your uh, standard Gumby. He's very big. He's like giant Gumby. Giant, dangerous, smash in the city Gumby. Uh, you can tell his feet have the little, like, someone just pushed their finger in uh, to make it his, his figure very square. Um, he stands up very well, though. Um, you got the stamp on the back. I mean, there's really, you know, the color is, is pretty much on point. He looks like the, the, the puppet from the TV show, um, for the most part, from the 1950s uh, uh, creepy TV show. And, uh, and yeah, and, there, and there's, there you go. That's Let's get modern Pokey in on this action. Um, so, yeah, uh, modern Pokey is a slightly smaller, maybe? Yeah, he is smaller than these, uh, this throwback Pokey. The, the legs are the same length, but they made the legs thicker. Um, the the head is bigger, the, like the body is is sort of larger, um, but he remains basically the same height. So so there you go. Okay, real quick, look at this. This is a Gumby figure. You can buy these. You can find them all over the place online, eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, so on and so forth. People will give you the fucking line of bullshit that this is a vintage Gumby figure. He is not posable for some reason that we'll find out in a moment. He's really big. He's like nine and a half inches tall. On the back, this is the things that they'll mention. Oh, Prima Toy Company. Okay, I mean, that's like, that's you make some. So he's legit. He's not a bootleg. Oh, vintage. This is a vintage Gumby. How the fuck can you tell? There's no year on the back of this. And there's a website. So really not that vintage. So what kind of fucking Gumby is this? What people will, when they're putting in their little tags and, and uh, the, the information about it, about it being nine and a half inches tall and perfect for your fucking desk or any Gumby fan, look, fucking rare. Um, it's not. It's that look at the, this company at the top. It says you can't really read it, but I'll read it for you. It says Multi Pet International. This is a dog toy, and it's not even an old dog toy because you can get one on Amazon for like five bucks, four bucks. It's really, really cheap. Um, and it says right there dog toy this is a dog toy and i keep the little packaging on just to remind me to be ever vigilant when shopping online for vintage toys and and whatnot that there are hustlers scammers and scalpers about that will try to take advantage of you and in this case i came up on the losing end and um i mean really honestly it's not that bad it does look kind of cool on your desk and if it's just a stand-up gummy that you're looking for or if you're looking for a toy for your dog it doesn't seem that bad i mean i feel like a dog will tear the shit out of this thing um but yeah it's a dog toy and it's not worth 20 bucks it's not worth 25 bucks it's not vintage nobody is collecting vintage dog toys even if it was and, um, and yeah, even if it's 20 years old, um, yeah, I'm not interested in getting a fucking vintage dog toy. This is a dog toy. That's it. You know what? I thought I was going to have a problem cutting up one of these figures. For scientific reasons, of course. Yeah, yeah, science. Anyway, I'm ready to slice and dice. So here's what we've all been waiting for. Um, here is today's subject. What, you think I was just going to take one of those old figures and open it up? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'm gonna take one of these old figures out of the box, brand new, and I'm gonna see what this thing looks like on the inside. But before we do that, let's take a look at the packaging. This is the uh, uh, Trend Masters version of what we saw earlier. It's like sort of a throwback style packaging. Granted, it does look a little bit more like the Lakeside box. Um, he bends, he twists, he sits, he stands, hangs on. A perfect pal. Watch the adventures of Gumby, registered trademark, on television. You can animate your own Gumby adventures with this genuine stop-motion puppet. Um, I, this is a figure. Um, I don't know necessarily not. I guess you could use it as a stop-motion puppet. I could use anything as a stop-motion puppet. You know, but whatever. Um, so anyway, it does look similar to the uh, to the lakeside. But here's here's something that they did in the '90s that I, I don't really like. What's different about this besides the fact that he's fucking blue? Um, what is so different about this Gumby? You notice his little hand isn't isn't waving to us like, "Hey, everybody, it's me, your pal Gumby." No, it's the '90s. It's extreme. Fuck you. I'm just gonna leave my hands down. I'm not gonna wave. You can suck my Gumby dick. Um, but anyway, back of the box, you got to collect them all. It's the same shit that's on the back of the other Trend Masters boxes. Collect all the Gumby products. 1995. So this is fairly old. <laughs> but let's take a look at what he looks like on the inside, but let's take a look at what the packaging looks like on the inside first. Okay, so here he is, the subject. Uh, we have Treadmaster's Gumby, and um, I've lined him up, tried to line him up so that we can kind of see how we can do this. I do not want to hurt myself as I cut this open. It is made of really hard rubber, and I think it's gonna take a minute to do. So um, here we go, it's time to slice and dice. <laughs> I have here my Stanley box cutter, my uh, faithful friend here. And we will cut open Gumby and see what he looks like on the inside. And there you have it. Um, this is what we have left of Gumby. Um, this is what it looks like without the um, skeleton inside of it. Um, this yellow um, is stained all over the bottom of my photo booth. It's like Gumby's fucking blood is all over my, at least it's Trendmasters Gumby. I really don't like blue Gumby. Um, so, this is what it looks like, what we've all been waiting for. Um, Raz Holly had theorized that it was twist, twisted together. And you know what? Honestly, it should be twisted together uh, for durability. But this is all it is. This is a little, it's a little uh, 
just it's just a metal wire it's a thin metal wire um, in the shape of a general shape of a person uh, with arms and legs um, you have your five points on it um, and yeah it looks a little bit like a like a fucking creepy scarecrow um, yeah this is my most unique uh, Gumby now <laughs> That's it, we made it to the end! Congratulations on finally finishing a series, Gorilla. Too bad about the WWE Retros, LJNs, the Dreadnoughts, that storyline where you were gonna fight Flagface or whatever his name is. Hey, fuck you, Jesse. Why are you always gonna bring that up? You're a quitter. I'm not done yet, Jess. And I might be revisiting some things that I didn't finish real soon. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, you'll see it. Anyway, that's all for now. Raz Holly, hit the music!